familiar with silicon chip. Um, the silicon chip is that thing which makes our mobile phones work, it makes our laptops work, and it pen it's penetrated almost every single aspect of modern society. Every year, the number of uh, transistors on a chip increases by a factor of two. And the way that's done is transistors get smaller and smaller and smaller, so length scales go down by a factor of roughly 1.4 every 18 months. We're getting to a point now where transistors are getting very difficult to make at that sort of size range. What Jean-Pierre has done, he's a well-known world-leading scientist in the area of silicon on insulator technology. He's invented a new type of transistor, the uh, junctionless transistor, which has dispensed with some of the complexity that you see in today's transistor. So all, all of transistors today have what are called junctions in them. And that means different areas of the transistor that are doped with either boron or phosphorus to make them behave in different ways. And it's those junctions in the transistor that make the transistor into, essentially into a switch that can be turned on and off. And that's how our, our computer chips work. Every computer chip now has billions of transistors on it. So what Jean-Pierre has done has invented a way of dispensing with the junctions in the transistor. So instead of having three parts in a transistor, a source, a gate, and a drain, now we just have a, a very small wire, which is, if you can imagine, just a little wire with a square cross-section. But that square is exceedingly small. It's about 10 nanometers in size, 10 nanometers across. Now, to put 10 nanometers in context, the size of a uh, cold virus particle is about 100 nanometers. So we're talking about something which is maybe a million times smaller than the, sm than the smallest thing you can see, which would probably be a human hair. Um, so having said that, you've got this extremely small transistor. The problem in making a, a normal transistor is making the dopants stay where you want them to stay during the silicon processing. Well, the junctionless transistor does away with that problem. Um, so it's a very simple device, and the, there are other special characteristics of this device which give you a bonus. Not only is it simpler to make, but it should work a lot faster than conventional transistors, and it should be actually better with some of the new and advanced materials that we're working on um, which will eventually replace silicon. So materials like germanium and uh, exotic 3-5 materials, as they're called, like gallium indium arsenide, which will work much faster than silicon and with much lower power than, than current devices.